Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Andrew Gabblefinger and today I'm going to be talking about my paper comparing the accuracy and efficacy of density functional theory and machine learning at studying protein substrate interaction. I would like to apologize that if you're seeing this video because if you're seeing this video that means that there were technical difficulties this morning and I wasn't a able to actually log on and give this presentation myself and for that I really apologize. So outline. Uh, first I'm going to talk about why we study present proteins and then I'm going to talk about why we have to use computational methods to do it. Uh, then I'm going to talk about striking the balance between cost and accuracy on these computational methods. Uh, then I'm going to talk about our specific methodology and then finally our findings. So why do we study proteins? Uh, in the first place? Well, for one thing, it just so happens that we're made out of proteins. Uh, but beyond that, just about every biochemical reaction and process involves a protein in some capacity. And proteins act on substrates uh, or and have ligands surrounding them. So what biochemists ultimately want to do is know how these reactions and how these interactions take place whether it's an oxygen binding to a hemoglobin to fuel your cells, or it's alcohol dehydrogenase in your liver uh, removing and processing alcohol in your blood. Uh, so why do we use computational methods to do it? Uh, well, experimental methods uh, when it comes to proteins can often be limited. When it comes to determining the, uh, the structure and the uh, conformation of proteins, we really only have one major weapon in our toolkit, which is X-ray crystallography. But the problem with X-ray crystallography is that it's very limited. Uh, our, oftentimes the resolutions aren't good enough for smaller ligands, like water, for instance. Uh, in our, uh, the the protein that we're actually talking about, we use crystallography data from a 2016 paper on uh, on ferritin, and uh, its resolution was 1.9 angstroms, which is pretty good for X-ray crystallography. But the problem is, is that in that, in uh, 1.9 angstroms, uh, that is longer than the length of a water molecule. <laughs> so, uh, while yes, we can see that there's apparently water at the active site of ferritin, we don't really know where it is to any high degree of accuracy uh, because we just can't we just can't see it well enough to tell. Uh, and with all of ligands, that can really be an issue on studying these interactions. And that's and computational methods don't necessarily have these same faults and these shortcomings. But computational methods do have their own shortcomings. For instance, when it comes to computation, everything is a, is trying to strike the right balance between computational cost and accuracy. As we increase computational costs, uh, or as we increase accuracy, computational costs are almost always increase to the point where it's it's impossible to get a cal calculation done. Uh, so we really have to work. So higher accuracy methods like uh, coupled cluster or uh, molar pleasant uh, really can't aren't as useful to us as uh, lower uh, accuracy levels like density functional theory or molecular mechanics because we just can't use them on a large scale yet. So what do, so what's our methodology? Well, we're going to use machine learning. So notably, uh, that's the A and I uh, platform uh, for machine learning. That's a prefabricated uh, network, and uh, we're going to use it with density functional theory. Uh, so the these in the past have been similar accuracy methods, um, but machine learning is a lot faster. Uh, and then we're going to use coupled cluster or CC. SDT to determine which method is more accurate. Uh, coupled cluster is uh, a significantly higher accuracy method, but it 
takes way too long, and that's why it's often not used in place of some of these other methods. Uh, and for our study, we're going to be studying the bullfrog ferritin M subunit active site. So the ferritin as a protein is made out of these different subunits that all uh, come together in a singular shell uh, to make this, pr this uh, quaternary structure, uh, and we're going to be studying this M uh, subunit at its active site. So how much time is that going to take? Well, uh, this full particularly uh, this particular full ferritin subunit is 1,941 non-hydrogen atoms. Uh, I didn't even I couldn't even find a way to count the hydrogen atoms because it would crash my computer when I tried. Uh, so uh, let's look at use that number for approximations on different scaling. So this these numbers are with a single CPU. Uh, density functional theory uh, would take about 4.4 million years. That's a bit longer than I have to work on this project. Um, coupled cluster, uh, or CCSDT, uh, would take about 3.2 million billion years. So in that amount of time, every star in the universe is going to burn out. So I don't really have, I don't think anyone here has that kind of time or really anyone in the world. Uh, and then machine learning, it doesn't scale uh, as cleanly as these other methods do, uh, but I did look up an approximation, um, and also this is going to be somewhat inaccurate because this approximation was done assuming a single CPU, but machine learning actually doesn't use a CPU, it uses a GPU. Uh, but that's still going to take about 4.4 thousand years for this. So uh, what do we have to do? Well, we have to make our models smaller. So I cut this whole, that whole uh, subunit that you saw, that all those 1,941 atoms, I had to cut that down quite a bit to get all this to work. Uh, so we cut it into the most three most impactful amino acids on this uh, subunit. And these are the three amino acids that are directly surrounding the ferro-oxidase center at the active site. Uh, so we went from 1,941 atoms to this is just around 30. Uh, so using that, uh, density functional theory is going to take about five hours with a single CPU. A uh, coupled cluster, that's still a bit expensive. That's still a bit of time right there. Uh, that's four years. That's that's a little bit more than we have, uh, and that's every run. And then we have machine learning, which would take about eight minutes, or le it would actually take less with the GPU, but. Uh, the calculations have to be smaller. So in order to use coupled cluster CCSDT, uh, we have to go even smaller at times. Uh, so these are what we call model systems, which are just smaller versions of the interactions that we're really trying to study. So when we were trying to study iron binding to water, we used just an iron bound to a water. Uh, but when we use, we're trying to study um, water bound to uh, histidine, we use water bound to midazole. Uh, and the times on this, I this is the time for uh, for uh, iron bound water. Uh, DFT only takes about 30 minutes for these calculations, oftentimes less, uh, depending on the method. Um, coupled cluster, three hours, which is doable. That's actually can be done, but it is fairly difficult. And then uh, machine learning takes about a second. So in terms of time, there's really no comparison between these methods, uh, especially on these smaller system. Uh, but the problem with using machine learning is iron isn't available on the machine learning network that we really wanted to use. Uh, so we were forced to look at uh, water binding to histidine in the ferritin subunit instead of water binding, direct, binding directly to the iron. <sighs> so uh, we had to create a new model system for that. So what we did was we used imidazole and water binding system alternatively instead. 
And what we found, so this research is still ongoing, going, but uh, using the ANI neural network fi uh, framework uh, or machine learning framework, uh, we found that histidine's water binding energy in the whole subunit, um, which is just the subunit minus the iron, uh, was at negative 158 kilocalories per mole. Uh, and when we look at the density functional theory, this is the model system finding. Since we don't have the coupled cluster data back, we haven't gone on and uh, proceeded with uh, one particular uh, functional and basis set on the, lar on the s slightly larger system. Uh, values range from negative 20 kilocalories per mole to 18.6 cal calories per mole so we're really getting a wide range here and we wouldn't and that's uh that a wider range than we would have expected honestly um and we're hoping in the end that uh the ani network will uh be significantly closer than the dft network will uh i would like to at this time give some thanks to Dr. Chalai, who was my advisor, uh, the Ronan and Laura Strain Honors College that allowed me to complete this project. Uh, and I would like to also give some thanks to Dr. St uh, Cyrus Burnett and Dr. Neal from the uh, University of Indianapolis Chemistry Department. Thank you. Hope you have a nice day. Uh, have a uh, good end of the uh, convention.